ठीक छे सर पार्ट छे पार्ट छे the sadness that my friend noticed in my last video is the abject despair of all of the traumatized people in this world and all of the damage these traumatized people are doing to themselves and each other including myself and life as a human being can feel like such a suffering it can feel so anguishing that i actually for 6 to 10 seconds today daydreamed about the relief that shoving a knife in my throat would give me as if that's the solution okay it's not that's the depth of my sadness from my suffering living this life as nadina okay the depth of my suffering and my pain my reality my memories one day i'm going to start divulging on my youtube channel the actual intensity and degree of the abuses that i've actually had to endure in this body and you will go how is it possible that i stayed alive and i was able to be become such a loving kind being okay we will go there when the library set up when the when the webcam and all that set up when it's on a computer and it's from a distance I'll take some notes. I'll have some, you know, I'll make sure I'm safe and I'm protected. I've got some oils, some essential oils to keep me calm. I'll have a cup of tea. I'll be prepared, right? I'll also uh create homework from it because it's going to trigger a lot of you. So I'm going to be saying things like I'll set it up into chapters and subtitles. I'll create a curriculum out of it. Out of the different levels of areas of the of the abuse that's in my life and exactly what happened and how it happened and how it it, it um showed itself up in adult life and all the different dynamics that have happened throughout my life because of blah 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 so I'm going to actually utilize it in a very very professional manner and in a very structured manner and we will go there and then you guys will realize that if that's what I've experienced and I've survived Lazarus the testimony of Lazarus Lazarus died and was reborn through Jesus' salvation Jesus' love well that's me Jesus has kept my body alive the amount of physical abuse that my body has had to endure as a child and up and we're talking about real sort of a cult a cult really extreme torture based sort of sexual abuse scenarios here okay with water you know being drowned to drown the scream out drug and juice like you know it goes there. i've seen children murdered in front of me with knives you know the list is just insane what i've actually experienced in my life and there are many of us out there a lot of us out there turn to drugs and um numbing themselves out and i've been told too many times by very clever therapists that i am extraordinarily unique in the sense that i didn't disassociate i never disassociate or so i thought up until about 3 weeks ago okay up until a couple of weeks ago i was felt like i'd always you know been present and i was there with the memories right but up until recently i've realized on some level this uh air can this evaporative air conditioner is so effective it's just there can you see it and it's so effective I'm actually cold <laughs> it's really really hot outside but that one spot see it's on I've got it on pretty much on full but uh that one spot like it cools the whole house down right but if you're actually sitting on that couch it blasts on top of you it's like you've got this freezing cold buddy it actually gets cold um but I just wanted to share with you Like that look of sadness that my friend saw on my face and my eyes that made her feel so sad you know that is that's just genuine sadness for all the pain all the trauma that so many people are experiencing and now this includes my husband and his family and the lady that came to my house who was supposedly a friend of mine and just thought it was okay to you know uh, abuse me in my own home even though she was purportedly worried about me you know what i mean like uh so yeah abuse someone who's down because you're disappointed that they're down <laughs> <laughs>
and you can't be the strong one for them that they need you to be. <laughs> it's like, dude, I put you in God's hands, you know, because I'm learning boundaries. See, I'm, I've got God in my life, and I've never had God in my life before, okay? I'm transformed. I'm actually transformed on such a cellular level. I, I, my, 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 everything about me is about truth and authenticity now. I think I've shared this with you a few times before. I now n do not fear losing people. If someone goes out of my life because I tell them the truth, that is fine. I'm not a people pleaser anymore as a result of that. Uh, and I know God, I've got the shield, I've got God's armor of, of, of protection around me. So I know, I know I'm protected. I know no one can hurt me. The, the, the enemy has no power of me anymore. So that, that, that one bit there, uh, that one bit, that was about sadness. And the second bit that she said was, because we talked for about an hour. The second question that I wanted to answer in this video, which I know I've had other people ask me this question. And um, I get this question face to face, and I also get it via text, and I also get it via email, and um, it's just the question that seems to be the most prevalent question that many of you have. Would I take my husband back? Now, I keep answering the question, and it seems like no one's really listening to the answer. In God's grace, in God's grace, if God wills it, my husband coming back into my life as my husband, as us being husband and wife, living a life, a shared, dreamed, collaborative, and I know that my husband's family are watching this, and I know they're passing this information on to him. And I know, I just assume that he's promised them he'll never speak to me ever again. So I know what they're wanting. They're wanting me to just disappear into the ether and, and, and just make it so simple for my husband to stay small so they can keep him where they need him, so that they can keep their life as they've always had it, so that they don't get their illusion disrupted. Well, one... Your illusion is already disrupted. You will never be the same again. You're always going to remember me. You're always going to play, talk about me in a disgusting manner. You're never going to be unchanged from the fact that my husband opened his heart, drank big and chose to marry me. Whether it goes back small and stays small or whether he steps up and honours what husband and wife and marriage really is. So either or, the family's life is forever changed regarding my husband. If he chooses to really bring God into his heart, really brings God into his consciousness, really accept what husband actually really means, actually accepts and honours the commitment of marriage and the commitment of being a husband and what that means, which is cleaving to the wife. God first, wife second. Cleaving to the wife, honouring the wife, ensuring the wife's needs are met. He embodying what husband means in God's eyes and him honouring what marriage is in God's eyes and him honouring the responsibilities husband to wife. And him cleaving to me as wife and him actually stepping up and ensuring that our marriage is treated as the sacrament that it is, then we have a starting point. Then we have a starting point. Now, I've had a couple of people saying to me that they don't believe I've got the ability to actually, sorry, the phone saying it's going to go flat again for some reason. I think it's because Zena. I think it's because Miss Zena here has just bloody taken the lead out again. <sighs> I just want to say it's in God's hands. It's in God's hands here because if it's God's will. See, I still think on some level, I, I don't 100% know, okay? I don't know if it was us being deceived by the devil that encouraged me to keep, keep staying committed to my 
my husband, who was then a lover who was not treating me right, and then we became fiancés, and even as fiancés he wasn't treating me right, why did I keep being there? Why did I keep being in that situation before we even got married? Why did I not step up to the red flags? Was that the devil in disguise trying to create chaos to bring me down? Or was that God saying, please trust me, when you get to Northern, it's all going to be well. Please trust me, when you get married, please trust me this, please trust me that, please trust me, I've got a big plan for you. What, where, where was the devil's attack in there and where was it God's will? I still to this day don't 100% know because what I do know is that there was a lot of angels going, please, please marry him, step up, do this, do this, rah, rah. And that was like really propelling me to stick it out, even though some bad stuff was occurring, especially from my husband's brother. And my husband wouldn't, my partner at the time, wouldn't step up to his brother. This was before we even got engaged. Um, and I felt like God, it was God's angels propelling me to stick it out and not give up. But now I don't know if that was the devil in disguise or God's angels. Um, and I won't know until uh, there's a time frame when there's some sort of closure around this marriage. So upon the time when my husband deigns to get in communication with me to resolve where we're heading next, and I understand where he's at, you know, on that level, and I and I can see God's uh, God's God in action. I won't really know until then whether it really was God's plan or whether it was just the devil in disguise. But um, what I'm doing is I'm praying and trusting and accepting that there is a reason why I'm supposed to be in Northern. There was a reason why I married my husband. Um, this life I'm in right now, as I've shared with you many times before, it breaks my heart that I'm up here in an isolated country town as a single woman. Sorry, as a as a as a as a married woman with my husband just a well with no contact, pretending that I'm dead, like acting like I don't exist, basically, just disappears and acts like I don't exist. Okay, so wow, this is, this is an amazing reality at my age. A friend of mine told me last night about this amazing dance. Today she told me about the good dance party was on last Friday, which I couldn't get to because I didn't have petrol, and she's telling me all about it. And I'm like, I know, I want to go. I wanted to go. I need to dance. But I didn't have, my car was on empty. I had no money in my account. My car was on empty. I couldn't get there. I'm isolated. I'm isolated. I'm in a small country town on a piddly amount of money. Not able to keep any of it together. I definitely don't have petrol money. I've got enough money to take the dogs to the river for their walk so I barely can feed the animals. People have had to help me with vouchers and donating meat to keep my dogs alive. You know, like, this is no reality. I, by choice, went to, yay, woohoo, this is my desired light way to spend my life. Woohoo, bring it on. You know, especially when I was so set up in my inner city, you know, townhouse, you know, like, Seriously, guys, I have to accept this is God's will because otherwise I just go mad. I have to accept that I'm supposed to be here. What it's called radical acceptance. Radical acceptance, like this is my reality, guys. So I have two choices: go mad, go crazy, commit suicide, uh, completely fucking give up, or make it work in acceptance that this is this is it. This is it. This is. Oh, you know what? But you know, I've had all these people say to me. I don't know how you do it. I couldn't do it. Everyone, everyone says to me, I wouldn't be able to do it. I couldn't handle it. I don't know how you're doing it. I said, well, I've got no choice. I fucking got no choice. Give up. Give up or keep going. They're my two choices. Give up or keep going. Do you know what giving up looks like? These beautiful creatures you see here. I give up. What happens to them? And my cat. What happens to my animals if I give up? Do I really have a choice? What happens to my soul if I give up? The garden. The house will fall apart. The, the people who lived here before for 25 years, I've betrayed them. When they sold us this house, I was so happy. I want to live here for the rest of my life and make it beautiful. 
Oh, this is a beautiful block of land. This is a beautiful house. I give up. What happens to this beautiful house? What happens to this land? What happens to the dream, the therapy dream that's going to actually be God's work and that actually helps heal hundreds of, if not thousands of people? What happens to my books that I'm going to write in that library in there? What actually happens to those books that are going to save thousands of people's lives? What happens to me being a child of God doing God's work if I give up? I have no choice but to keep going. That's how I'm handling it. But I'm not handling it, not in anguish, not struggling, not going through moments of insanity, of, of the sheer grief and excruciatingness of it all. It's not easy. None of this is easy. It's excruciating. I have to pray to God constantly to help take alleviate the pressure cooker of the pain off me to get through because I just my reality just breaks my heart I'm just like well, how did I get here how is this my how is this truly my life for the moment when will it end when will it become peaceful again when will it become lovely again when when will my heart Stop fucking feeling like it's going to just rip apart and just break up and just disappear into the sky. When? When? And I pray to God, please. How long does it go for? Give me some clear answers. Um, um, take this pain away. Uh, please help me. But also, please, God, how much longer is this going to go on for? Please. I... I'm just tired. And when my friend sees the tiredness, I said, it's tired. I'm tired. And will I accept Anthony back? Will I accept him back? Seriously? Like, God has to make it clear to me whether to accept him back or not. I'm not going to answer that question as a human because I still don't know whether he and I are supposed to be together under God's eyes or if the devil just brought us together to try to knock me out and kill me and just and destroy me to take me off God's track. I don't know yet. I don't know whether I was supposed to marry Anthony and move up to Northern to be so broken as in to surrender to God's will, to actually do God's work, just, just as me as a single woman living the rest of my life uh, as a single woman. And I've had too many people say to me, Nadina, you will not remain single. Trust me. The minute you actually stop being so committed to your husband and the minute you get that clarity to let him go, boom, boom, the most amazing man is going to come to your world. You will not spend the rest of your life alone. They say that to me, I hear what they're saying, and I know in God's grace, God plans for me to have a peaceful, loving, supportive, very productive senior life. But I've just got to get very strong about the true surrendering as a child of God, the tests and the tribulations of ensuring that the devil has no place in my thoughts or my actions evermore is, is what I need to get to before... before my just due rewards will be mine. And my just due rewards do include my husband by my side, living in a balanced way, where we're healthy companions, where there is no devil attack and devil dysfunction. If that is my current husband, if he's able to step up, that is exactly everything I desire. As a human, as Nadina, to have my beautiful husband, Mr. Anthony McLeod, by my side 
as a committed husband, committed to me as his wife, Nadina McLeod. That is what I pray to God for. With him putting God first and me second, cleaving to wife, that is your answer, everyone. Yes, I would take him back upon him becoming a godly man and cleaving to me as wife, cleaving and honouring and committed to our marriage. Yes. But if he's not able to do that, then no. That's your answer. So I don't know what the outcome is, peoples. I don't know how my future looks. You know, because at the moment, there's no commitment from him. There's no cleaving. There's no respect. There's no honour. He doesn't even acknowledge I exist. Betrayal trauma. The ultimate betrayal trauma. My husband is living his life and acting like I don't even exist. All because he needs to resolve issues with his uh, family of origin and the devil in that family is so strong that they're only going to be able to heal it if they if they really truly get to that point of accepting God's protection, God's armor, really bringing God into their daily thoughts and prayers. So that's where it's at, guys. You watch my YouTubes. Um, I, I have had quite a few of you say, and I'd read up on narcissism, uh, toxic empathicness, uh, uh, trauma bond. I'm learning about all this stuff, and on a clinical psychology level. You know, I'd be mad to ever um, re-engage with um, my husband. I'd be mad to actually even believe that anything potentially healthy could ever occur with such a being who has proven to me over and over again that he can be cruel to the nth degree and just keep on creating painful painful experiences with me and just continue, continue the psychological abuse. But on a godly level with God's wisdom and with the Bible, it's the exact opposite. God permits being broken in relationships, breakdowns in relationships in order to bring people closer to God. And it's the trauma of those two people loving each other that brings out what needs to be seen that would not be brought out otherwise. It only gets brought out in intimate relationships. The trauma that's come out within my husband's and I dynamic that I've been working on healing and I pray to God he's working on healing, would not have come out in any other way except for because we love each other so completely, you see. And is that not God working miracles? This is my life at the moment. It's a limbo. It's a conundrum. I'm going to shut it out now. Keep well. God bless. God bless. Okay, God bless. God bless.